a chilly spring day, but it's the first uh, club trip to the Arcona Pits this year. So, of course, got to make it out. You can kind of see behind me, if I can point in the right direction, right there, that's the south side. There you go, Aiden. Oh, sure, yeah. somebody's already found something. Oh, pleasant part. Oh, yeah, look at that. Look. Yeah, Rick just found a nice little plesopod. We're on the uh, north side, checking it out. And this is what he found. Very nice. So I'm just sitting up on the hill on the north side, just uh, looking for some stuff. Um, and I just spotted something pretty cool. Let's take a look. Let's play a game. Can you spot the cool fossil? I'll give you guys a second. Kind of just scan the area and then we'll zoom in and get closer that is my friends an unrolled trilobite so let's see carefully just lift them out and flip them over ooh the face is a little crunched by the looks of it but there's some of it there at least by the looks which is good yeah it looks like the back got crushed a bit that can happen when they uh get flattened yeah it looks like the face kind of got caved in well can't they can't all be perfect but still pretty happy with that I'll take that. This is the spot I'm going to start with. It's got, or last couple times I found some good crinoid calyxes, so I'm just going to poke around and see how uh, how it is. And if I find anything interesting, I'll, I'm, I'll be sure to show you guys. So I thought I'd give you guys kind of an idea of what I'm just looking through when I'm looking for these calyxes. So we got this... Uh, kind of clay material that everything's eroded out of that or the there is some limestone in the area and shale as well but you can see this is just kind of a fossil soup and we're just looking for crinoid material kind of focusing on those areas when you see a bunch of crinoid material I found that kind of gives you a good uh, idea but you can just see there's just, it's like a, a fossil soup basically, as I like to say. Uh, and you have to look through the fossil soup to find that one little piece of fossil that you're interested in. Though, often, you find a bunch more other things that you weren't looking for, but that are still interesting. So, you just kind of have to keep an eye out and kind of wade through all the fragments to uh, look for the cool stuff. It can be a bit time consuming but honestly I enjoy this just kind of kneeling down and looking at the ground for hours on end. This piece has some crinoid in it so it's always good to check it because you never know if at the end of the crinoid there might be a calyx. I don't see anything but I'll put that on my bag of stuff. We have ourselves a little trilobite head here. Probably an Elder Gobs Rana. Nice. Well, we'll keep looking. Well, I'm not even going to play Spot the Fossil with you folks, because this one is too obvious. Real. I mean, the face again, mashed in by the looks of it, but... I mean, I am not complaining for the size of it. This is... If it was inflated, volume-wise, it would be the biggest one. I've got a really nice inflated enrolled one. I'll uh, throw the link to the video that I found that one in. Um, but this one is the biggest one, just probably size-wise. We'll, uh, see if we can carefully... Oh, oh no. Okay, well, I'll have to... Sorry, the eye just loosened up, so I'm gonna 
just carefully pop it out so that eye is loose. So I want to keep everything together and then take it back home and hopefully glue it back together. So I'm going to have to probably do that with two hands. So I'll, uh, once I got it extracted, I'll show you guys. So I popped it out. Definitely going to have to glue that eye back on, but it's... Uh, looks like it's basically there. A little crushed, but we'll take that home, clean everything off very carefully, and uh, get it uh, glued back together. I apologize if it's windy, but I found myself a calyx. Let's see if you guys can spot it. I did kind of use the child to point in the right direction. I think, just looking at it, it is... It might be a coral crinus, but I think it's a different uh, species that I have not have not collected. See, it's not all there, but it's got some of the arms on top. It's kind of like this cone-shaped inverse cone. So this is the base where it would have attached the stock, and then up here is where the arms would have gone. But yeah, that's pretty exciting. I'm pretty sure that's a new species of crinoid for me, so... That'll make it, I think, four or five species that I found in the Arcona area so far. So this is kind of cool. Usually I find them quite fragmented, but this is a huge block of, like, hash plate, basically. You can see it's just chock full of fossils. Let's get a closer look. Got a whole bunch of uh, disarticulated stuff. In fact, I see something interesting there. I might take that home. Um, you can see these, uh, let's see here, these are a good example, these are what you call tentaculites. Uh, and you just got a whole bunch of cool stuff. I think I'm gonna take this home because it looks like it has some interesting little fragments and bits in them. And I know these blocks can sometimes contain starfish fragments, which are pretty rare, so... With one this big, I should probably just take it home and take a look at it, because you never know what, what might be in there. I think actually there's the inverse of a trilobite, a partial trilobite head there. So it's a pretty interesting large block of fossil soup basically. So usually I don't video this stuff but there's just so many of them. It's kind of a strange little area that I found myself in. I found a patch where there's a bunch of microcyclist corals and I'll show you what a, what a microcyclist coral is. Here's a decent sized one that I just spotted basically this flat uh, uh, solitary coral they're super thin but there are a bunch more let's see if we can spot a couple uh, there's the backside of one let's flip it over uh, and there was another one nearby yeah okay there is another one like there are just a bunch of them here like I I probably picked up 10 or 15 now so here we have something interesting unfortunately it's all disarticulated but um, this if I can zoom in and get it is uh, from my understanding I believe a pretty rare crinoid um, we've got some of the stem pieces here and then here you can see some of the plates off of the calyx, but it's all been disarticulated. <laughs> I think last time I was here, I found some of the stems and the rest, of, must, and the rest must have washed out. Because uh, this was not uh, like, I did not see any of this material the last time. So just over there, let's zoom in. He's, we got, uh, it looks to be a partially enrolled we'll flip it I'm hoping it's all there but it looks a little beat up actually I think he's just a little squished a little sideways but he's well I can't tell I can't say for sure but it looks like he's just squished a little sideways there might be a little bit uh, of this side missing but all together, another lovely little trilobite. We'll uh, get her cleaned up, and hopefully, hopefully he's he's all there. 
maybe just a little squished. So I haven't even moved from where I found my enrolled trilobite. Uh, and then right at my leg, I spotted something. A little trilobite head. And sure enough, flip it over. It's a nice little enrolled juvenile. <laughs> so that's uh, four, four trilobites for me uh, on this trip. I feel like that's doing pretty good. Found this awesome brachiopod. Very good right. preservation. And very good size. Enjoy but look at that. That's crazy brachiopod. So first, looking at all the trilobites we collected on this trip, they all seem to have some sort of damage to them. For example, the first one has his face totally mashed in. Though the back end, what we saw originally, looked really good. I mean, it still looks really good, but you can see its tail is folded in and its face is mashed in. Then the largest one of the trip, you can see its eye was totally displaced, kind of mashed to one side. I got it cleaned and prepped by a friend of mine, but it required a lot of stabilization with glue because it basically exploded as it was drying because the whole this whole right side over here was all hollow, basically. But you can see that most of the trilobites at this location are usually pretty horribly mangled because they're crushed under the weight of the formation or just destroyed as they're being buried. It's actually quite uncommon to find a nicely inflated trilobite like this one. This one I found a couple years ago on the side of a, uh, a of a local river in that same area and it's the same species or same general species uh, there are two types of elder gops um, species there's elder gops rana rana and milleri i believe this one uh, is uh, a rana rana i'm unsure about this one whether it's a rana rana or a milleri but as you can see most of them, including these two, are all kind of mangled. This one I kind of like because it got squished sideways instead of, usually you see it kind of horizontally, so as they enroll, it's kind of the horizontal plane of the enrollment that gets crushed, so their, their faces get crushed or their tails get crushed. But this one, it's vertically, so it's been crushed along the midsection so you can see for example using this nicely inflated one the whole midsection this whole midsection has been crushed so much that it's basically turned into a little mohawk which is really cool i find that very interesting so even though it's not perfectly preserved i think it's still quite cool and the eyes on this one are nice and sharp so i can't complain and then, of course, we have the little juvenile. You can only really figure out uh, the species of these juveniles by just looking at the eyes under a microscope and counting them. I found one other juvenile before. I'll put a link in the description below to that video. But as you can see, they don't usually survive well. And it's very uncommon to find a nicely inflated one. Moving on to the crinoids, we got the first crinoid calyx of the day. This one comes from a rare crinoid spe uh, species found in the Arcona deposits. Uh, this is uh, f a, from the Porterio crinus arcanensis uh, species. So I've been told that species is a bit outdated and it's kind of used as a catch-all for a couple uh, varieties of uh, crinoids rare crinoids at uh, Arcona. So I'll throw up an example that kind of matches the uh, crinoid calyx that I found just to see what a whole one might have looked like. Then we've got this piratized uh, kind of flattened crinoid calyx. You can see some of the arms and then on this end you can see the stem where it would have attached to something. So this one is a uh, unknown but it's probably one of the more common ones like a 
a corocrinus, uh, like a flattened corocrinus. Then we have the really, really, really rare one. So this one is all disarticulated, and we're only we only got half the calyx. But I thought I'd show you all the pieces. So these are all like the little arm bits, bit of the stem, more pieces of the stem. Uh, these are all separated into bags for pieces that I could seemingly fit together. But this partial crinoid calyx comes from a very, very rare uh, species of crinoid. Uh, only, I've been told only three whole uh, calyxes have been found of this species. So even to find a partial one is very, very rare. It is the Ancyrocrinus bulbus species. You can see this is that more well-preserved half of the crinoid calyx. That's where the stem would have fitted in. And then there's a little bit, a little bit of the arm bits are still attached there. But altogether, it's quite, quite uh, disarticulated. I had a friend go back there when he was there leading a trip uh, to check out the same spot again, just to see if there was more material that had washed out. Because, in fact, I'll throw up an example or an artist's rendition to see what this would have looked like whole. Um, it has this anchor that when the stem goes to attach to the anchor, basically the piece of the bottom of the stem or the bottom piece that would uh, basically uh, anchor it to the sea floor. And it literally looks like an anchor. It's pretty cool. Uh, I have the bits of the stem that actually narrow down to where it would have probably just been attached to the anchor. Unfortunately, uh, my friend could not find the anchor or any more bits or pieces of uh, this uh, crinoid, this disarticulated specimen. So I think I did a pretty good job uh, collecting uh, the material of, of this specimen. Because in fact, actually a trip before uh, last year, I found some of the stem pieces, but that was the only bits that had washed out some of the larger stem pieces that would have been closer to the top of this calyx. And then I guess I came back just right at the right time the next time around this year and uh, found uh, what was left of uh, the crinoid. So suffice it to say, I'm quite uh, happy to have found this specimen, even though it's a partial one. It's very cool to find something so rare and just to ha hold it in your hands. This isn't uh, a bit from a crinoid, but it is from a creature that is uh, a distant relative of crinoids. Uh, this is a bit of a starfish arm. So this is the first piece of starfish I found. It it's just a little part of the arm section, and this would have come from a Devano Aster type starfish. I'll try and throw up an example of that one as well, so that you can see a whole example. Now moving on to the honorable mentions, I have this lovely little piratized gastropod that I thought I'd show you. I just think it's very cool. It's nice and well preserved and piratized. You don't often see the gastropods in this area piratized, so that's cool to see. And then, of course, this really cool uh, brachiopod. It is what is known as a Calipleura nobilis. And this was also another specimen I got my friend to prep for me. Because it had some matrix on the top that I wanted to see what this would look like if it was nicely fully cleaned. And it looks spectacular. This is probably one of my favorite brachiopods I've ever found in the Arcona area like lovely p preservation and these generally aren't this inflated so it's well inflated as well so very cool find this brings us to the end of the video if you like this type of stuff or if you like rock counting videos and this is your first time watching me and you've gotten this far please do consider uh, liking this video and dropping a subscription as well that really helps please also in the comments below let me know what you found the most interesting out of all my finds that I showed you in the video. I always like to see what people find the most interesting. And I just wanna say thank you for watching and have a wonderful day, folks.